In today's video, I'm going to show you how to mass produce swamp bases for Age of Sigma Dominion. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. All of us at the studio are now in full swing behind painting Dominion and what's being produced right now is how we are painting the Crew Boys Gut Rippers as well as the non-metallic metal Stormcast Army with Scary Mini Painter. But we have a problem right now. We have no bases. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys two methods how you can produce swarm bases on mass. So the first method would be using off-the-shelf materials that you can buy in a hobby shop. And to do this video, we reached out to AK and they've kindly sponsored us with these materials right here. And the second method, we're going to use household items and produce these swamp bases as well. In the second method, you'll be able to use materials that you can find around the house. But this method can be a little bit more time consuming and there might be a little bit more wastage. However, due to the coronavirus situation right now, it'd be better to just use things that you can find at home or maybe even get some hobby materials delivered right to your doorstep. And lastly, I'll be providing my perspectives on whether the time savings on these off-the-shelf materials are worth your money or you'd be just better to mass produce your own homemade materials for basing. So without further ado, let's move on to the first approach where I'll be producing some swamp bases using the stuff that AK has kindly provided us. So in this chapter, I'll be showing you guys how to use these materials provided by AK to make swamp bases. As you can see right here, these materials are very very detailed and they save so much time. In this chapter, I'll also be sharing with you guys my honest thoughts of how to use the materials and whether I like the effects or not. So for this stage, I'll be using these materials right here. Alright, so let's get them ready and let's make some swamp bases right now. Alright, so with the first method, I've done a liberal application of AK Dark Earth. I find that this dries really, really matte. So I guess the difference between the different texture paste is how they dry and the finish. And this tends to be the most matte of them all. And why I'm applying this on one side is I'm trying to create some sort of bank where the ground is moderately dry and that's where the water line ends, okay? So now moving on, I'm moving on to something a bit more glossy. I'm going to be adding on AK wet ground. It's another texture paste but this tends to be a bit more watery. But why I found that it dries really glossy. That is why it's very useful because it creates a totally different texture. And before the paints are dry, what I'm doing is that I'm teasing the edge so that it blends into the dark earth. Okay, so now moving on, I'm going to add on a little bit of Games Workshop Badland Tufts just to create a different profile. And then these are a little bit of the AK brush. It's the late summer green. I find that this adds a lot of different texture to the base and because it's very fine, it makes the base look a lot more detailed. Okay, so right here, I'm going to be just dabbing on a little bit of water gel swamp. This, I know it looks kind of like a booger now, but when it's dried, it's going to be very clear and it's going to be very deep green. No way you should be placing this in thick layers because that's not meant to be the purpose, okay? So all in all, I find that this process is very replicable because there's almost no wastage. So if you look at this time lapse here, I'm just literally mass producing. So I'm just scooping the dark earth and I'm just doing all the dark earths first. Then after that, I'm just going to be adding in the wet ground. Yeah, so you just do it batch by batch. Yeah, you don't even need to wash the brush or the tool that you are working with. Okay, and then after that, just brush, 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 brush. Tough, 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 tough. And it's a very, very replicable painting process. And then after that, you can just add on little dollops of this water gel. 
very very replicable very very scalable okay so you can also do this for the smaller bases and what I've done for the smaller bases is that I've cut off the slaughter bases and I've just placed the slots in so that it fills up the gaps and this is particularly useful for the hop drop slitters because it's going to be pretty hard if the middle area is not filled up alright so now that we have some experience using the commercial off-the-shelf materials from AK, let's see what we can find around the home and make some swamp basin. So for this stage, probably I'll need to make some texture paste and I'll use PVA glue and some grit to achieve this result. I would definitely need to mix in a little bit of craft paint to colour this texture paste as well as add in a little bit of gloss varnish so that it has this wet look on this swampy boggy surface. As for the puddles, I'll be using the same technique that I've done on the lock probe base where I've mixed in some water glue along with some digital shape so that I can get like coloured puddles on the bases. And lastly, I'll embellish these bases with rocks because I guess this is the easiest thing you can find near your home. So these are the materials that I'll be using to achieve this result. Okay, get them ready and let's make some homemade swamp bases right now. So for the second method, what we'll need is some very fine and sifted sand. So I've sifted this sand to get the extra fine sediments and I find that the extra fine ones work just fine. Okay, so we need a binder after this. So the binder I'm gonna be using is craft paint. I'm gonna be using raw umber, just craft paint. So we're just gonna pour, I know it looks kinda gross, it looks like cat poop here, but whatever. We're just gonna put extra here all right and you're just gonna add in a little bit of water to thin this down and allow the consistency to be mixed okay and then you just mix it up okay so it looks a bit too dry just add in a little bit of water so that it forms a kind of texture gel find that this is strong enough to bind the sand to the base okay so because this is just a very rough mixture, you don't immediately get the adhesion that you get from the texture paste. It's sort of like this water based thing, maybe I added a bit too much water so I'm just slopping this on. There are many methods to do this, you can always use glue, then just dip it in a bit of sand, that's what other modelers do. And right here now, I'm just using a bit of water glue and mixing in a little bit of a tonian camo shade so that I'm creating the puddles. This is similar to what I've done with Lord Crook. And with this, you can just slather on a little bit of this gel and it should shrink and dry. It shouldn't be this thick, it will just shrink down and you can see just this dry condensed but glossy puddles of liquid so it looks like algae that has just dried off okay right after this because the base is looking kind of boring i'm trying to gonna embellish a bit of this base with some rocks so i just found some rocks in the pathway outside the studio i'm just gonna grab some of these rocks just place it on because we're trying to work with materials that are easily findable and of course you can't find tufts of grass at home okay so right here we have this static clock that's around in the studio if you don't have static clock you can always use something else because it's static clock it doesn't stand out like the tufts and we're just using the swamp gel and we're just placing it around the area to give it some kind of detail Okay, so after this, I'm just going to wash down the rocks using a Tonian camo shade to tie down the entire process. Just make sure that when you put rocks down onto your base, always secure them with super glue and tie them together with your base. So now that we have our two bases for basis of comparison, I would definitely say that the off-the-shelf stuff is definitely a huge joy to work with. It's just so convenient and I can just take what I need and there is very very little wastage. I really don't like to waste materials and this is just right up my alley. 
But that being said, the homemade solution is definitely cheaper. It costs next to nothing to get the amount of glue that you use and grit and stones are definitely free. However, I would say it's very hard to estimate the quantity that you require. Sometimes you just make a huge batch and there's a lot of wastage and I personally just am quite against wastage. As for appearance, I find that the off-the-shelf stuff really looks very intricate and really eye-catching. This gives a lot of variation to the materials that I will use for the swamp laces. And I really am in love with making swamp laces in this manner. However, if I really needed to make a huge large-scale army diorama, there's no way that I can afford just to buy off-the-shelf stuff to make these large dioramas. For large dioramas, I probably would recommend doing the homemade way where you can make large, large, large batches and the cost savings might actually just outweigh the time savings that you have on the materials that you can buy off the shelf. So just let me know which is your pick. Will you do homemade or will you just buy off the shelf? Let me know in the comments below. So that was a really quick video. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Remember, if you felt that I deserve it, give me a like and subscribe because it helps me grow the channel and it keeps the lights on and it keeps me producing videos such as this. If you want to support the channel even further, why not head on to Patreon and become a Patreon today. You get a whole slew of painting content that I've produced for the past year or so and every bit of support goes a long way and keeps the studio running. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end and I hope to see you in the next AOS Dominion painting video. See you.